All right, hi everyone. Um, today, we're gonna talk all about lenses and different focal lengths. And I'm gonna take some photographs with our model over here and show you the difference in these in the results from the different focal lengths. And I think the reason I, I well, let's, let's sort of go back to, you know, that age old question of what lens should I use? We see it asked a million times in the group and it's, it's always really important, you know, when you are investing in a lens to understand, you know, which lens is gonna be better suited to the style of photography that you are actually doing. I've got um, my favorite pieces of glass sitting here on the, on the little table next to me, I've got on my camera, my 24 to 70, which pretty much doesn't leave my, my body. It's probably for me, in terms of what I photograph, the most versatile lens that there is. Um, I often will zoom out when I'm photographing, you know, large props and things like that. But the majority of the time it is at 70 mil focal length because I want that longer focal length, which is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I've got my 50mm lens over here, 1.2, and then I've got my 85, 1.2. I've also got a super wide 16 to 35 zoom lens here. And so I, I've got, I can go to 35mm obviously on my 24 to 70, but I also want to show you the difference between those two lenses as well, because the way that a lens is crafted and made will obviously determine those results as well. Um, and then you've got the 70 to 200 over here. Now I don't often use this, but when I was doing a lot of weddings and family portraits, that would be on my, my main camera body. Okay, so thank you so much. Someone's wishing me a happy birthday there. <laughs> Quite a few of you are, that's very lovely. Um, it's, it's been very overwhelming to read so many messages and comments today, getting text messages. It emails, it's crazy. So yeah, it's uh, not a special birthday, it's just another one, but it is nice to feel the love, thank you. Um, okay, so let's move on so I don't get too caught up here and carried away. When, when, when we are investing, obviously, in these lenses, it's a huge investment. Some lenses are going to cost a lot more than others, but in the, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. And Another thing that I want to recommend to people if they're looking at new lenses, you know, one day in the future, try hiring one and then that way you'll see if you like it, if it works for you. There are also some other things that you need to consider when you are choosing a focal length. I'm going to talk about obviously different focal lengths and what's going to be better suited, you know, to different styles of photography. but what you choose will also be impacted obviously by your budget but also the space that you shoot into. I know that a lot of people don't have large spaces to photograph um, you know babies in and family portraits indoor when they have a newborn baby and things like that so that will impact your choice as well but let me tell you don't just go and buy a lens because somebody else is using that lens. You've got to make that decision for yourself based on the information that is out there. And there is so much information on the internet about lenses. There's even a YouTube video on my YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and have a look at Kelly Brown, there is a lens video on there that goes for over an or just under an hour actually. And I did that with a guy from Canon who specializes in gear and equipment. So he knows what he's talking about and he's also a photographer. Doesn't matter whether you don't shoot Canon, lens is a lens. Okay, forget the brand, we're talking about, you know, um, focal length here and understanding that. So don't worry if I'm using Canon lenses and you are using another lens. Um, a lot of lenses are going to be impacted by the brand in terms of price. So, all right, let's move on. I've put a little bit of a slideshow here together for you. Um, let's go to, and, and obviously that question that we see all the time, what lens should I use, what lens, blah, blah, blah. All right, so when we talk about focal length, focal length is the angle of view and magnification of the subject or scene. The lower the focal length number, so I've got my 24 to 70 here on my, my body, the 24 mil is the, it means that it's the wider angle of view and lesser the magnification of the subject or the scene. Then the longer the focal length, so the higher the focal length number, so here, the maximum one we've got is a 200 mil. Uh, that means that that's going to result in a narrower angle of view and a greater magnification of the subject and scene. So when you understand that, it's gonna give you 
um, you know, more knowledge to, to make sure that you are investing in the right lens for you. If we go to the next slide, Garrett, um, this is going to give you a little bit of a visual here. So when we think about our, our little um, diagram there, and I'm sitting here in front of my baby, um, determining, oops, don't stand on your pants, Kelly. <laughs> um, so if I'm shooting with a wide angle lens, you know, and, and you think about that little diagram up there, I've got my arms out spread wide like this, or imagine I'm taking a picture of you at home. So I've got my wide angle um, lens here, right? So it's obviously taking in a lot of information. So let's think about a longer focal length. So when we go 300 mil, that's going to be a narrower angle. So then the wider it gets, the more information it's taking in, the closer you have to come to your subject. So let me move that out of the way. If we start, you know, at, at 300 mil, and then the, the, the wider that that becomes, you know, down to 200, take another little step out, down to 100, and then you're coming to 70, and then 50, and then and, and so forth, as you get closer to your subject, um, it, it, you're gonna have to need a wider angle. All right, so let's jump onto our next slide because I love showing these two, these next two slides because it really does give you such a greater understanding of focal length. So the very first photo there, you can see I've, and these are my beautiful kids, um, when you look at this first photograph, you don't think that there's a lot wrong with it, right? Um, and it's not until you actually see the second slide. So. At 35 mil, you know, that is obviously going to be a wider angle, but what happens is it also exaggerates the distance between your subjects. Now that little bottom photograph, you can see, I'm, um, you know, I'm quite close there. Hang on, there's, oh, it's the, yep, it'll come after the next one. The next one's the 70, the 70 mil, perfect. I'm looking on a different screen to Garrett, so I just want to make sure I'm, I'm going to show you the, the right slide next. Um, so that's going to exaggerate the distance between your subjects and the closest subject to your camera is going to appear larger. So this is my 13-year-old son. He would love to think that he is actually that big. <laughs> He's not. So now when we go to the next slide, I want you to see the difference here um, at a longer focal length. And we can go backwards and forwards, fantastic. All right, so that's now at a 70 mil focal length, having a look at that little picture down the bottom. You can see my person, as in me, I'm further away from them because um, I can to fill that frame exactly how I need to. So the longer the focal length means you must move further away from your subject. And this is what, and, and this fo longer focal length is going to compress the distance between your subjects and making them appear closer together. So now as Garrett flicks back and forth between those two photographs, you'll see they're in the exact same position. I'm just moving. So when you're photographing a couple holding a baby and they're going to be nice and closely posed like this, you want to create connection and have them appear, you know, you know um, really close together and intimate there. So when it comes to choosing those focal lengths, these are a lot of things that we need to actually consider. Um, I'm gonna take some photos now with the different focal lengths that I've got here available to me. And then what we're gonna be able to do is um, actually show the comparison between them, which is gonna be pretty cool, right? Ready to rock and roll? I'm oh, waiting. Lightroom magic going on here. Fantastic. Garrett's got me all tethered up to show you this. I hope this is enjoyable to you. How many people we got on today? Oh, let's have a look. We've got 96. I reckon oh, we can do better because it's Kelly's birthday. <laughs> Come on. And it's all about lenses. I mean, who doesn't love a nice bit of shiny glass, right? Share, 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 share. Okay, so I'm going to start here um, with my 70mm focal length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the frame with the baby's face, meaning I'm going to take a nice tight shot so it's going to be just below the baby's hands and just above the baby's um, head here. So a, a nice close up head shot. And I'm going to do it with my um, 24 to 70 mil first and then we'll switch out and we'll have a look at those. All right, I just want to change my ISO here very quickly.
Okay. Again, we've got another person. What platform do you use to do your videos? It's Wirecast with a heap of iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not looking at lighting here. What we're looking at is focal length. Oh yes, that is a big disclaimer. We've got overhead fluoros on today, so and don't do that. And it's purely so we can show you everything that we're doing here. I'm nice and well lit. Okay, so, all right, that's filling the frame at 70 mil. So you can see how close I am. Okay. Let's go out to 50 mil and keep the baby the same size in the frame. So I've got to move a little bit closer. Now let's go out to 35 mil. Now I've got to get even closer. And this is where I'm going to start to actually impact the amount of light on my subject. And it's only going to let me focus right there. So it won't let me get any closer. Okay, so now if I come out to 24 mil, I've got to get this close. But guess what? My camera is not going to focus on the subject because of how close I am to it in terms of the distance from the end of the lens to my subject. So what I'm going to do is come out to where it's going to allow me to focus. Have a look at that because that's as close as I can get with this lens. You can see how close I am to the oh, subject. Wow. You can see the clamps at the top. So when we talked before about taking a photograph, you know, and as we get closer with that wider angle, what happens is it takes in more information around your subject. So always considering that. All right, so if you have a look through those, Garrett, yeah, I'm just flick gonna through those. Switch views here so we can make that a little bit bigger, but still have you in shot. Here we go. Okay, so starting off with, let's go back to the beginning. All right, so we got 70 mil focal length. I want you to pay attention to the ears of the baby and the nose of the baby. And I'm focusing on the right hand side eye. That's a 50. 50 mil. 35, you can see I've got to get further back. And then at 24, we don't really want to shoot babies at 24. But have you noticed how the ears have really disappeared? And that nose seems so much bigger. So as you flick forward, look at that. That's crazy, right? So what you want to do when you're choosing a focal length is choose something with a longer focal length so that you're flattening the features and you're going to see all of those beautiful features and you're not going to make facial features appear larger. I think the problem with a lot of, um, I think the problem is a lot of photographers don't have anything to compare it to. So when I see photos, I know the difference because I do this on a regular basis when I'm teaching workshops and things like that. So it's really important to make sure that you try other lenses and understand you know, how they work and, um, and what they're all better suited to. All right, so what I might go to next is my, let's actually go the 16 to 35 and we'll really have some fun with this. And then we'll work our way up to the 70 to 200. We're going to be able to create a little gif with this, I reckon. I think this is going to be pretty cool. Okay, so we'll go 35. No, let's go 16 and then we'll work our way up to 200. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So this lens is going to be a little different to my 24 to 70. It's actually going to allow me to get closer, I believe, to focus. Um, this lens has been created more for commercial sort of architectural photographers and things like that. So basically they've made a lens that has a super wide angle but with less distortion than say you know the 24 mil on my um, camera there. So very very different type of lens. It's not a cheap lens. I'm at 16 mil right now and look at how close I am to the subject 
and I can still see, I'll take a photo just to show you. I can see the clamps. I'm getting a full body shot at that close. And I can see the clamps behind. Whoa. Um, no, that baby does not look great like that. <laughs> it yes, just it's brings good the if you want to use a hand, it? but um, yeah, you can see how much it's pushing that baby's body back. Okay, so I'll, um, I'll come in as close as I can focus here. All right, so that's at 16 mil, as close as I can get with this lens for it to Oy. focus. But have a look at now the light on the baby's face. Um, it's so dark because I've got to get so close. So if you're using a 35 mil lens and you've got to get close to take photographs, you're going to have to be really careful with your lighting because you're going to physically with your body block a lot of the light coming through. Mm. So that's another thing to really consider when you want to nail your lighting. Okay, so let's come out. Um, we won't go, oh well, we can take one at 20 mil. Okay, so that's as close as I can get. Let's go 24 mil. Let's go 28. We're filling the frame here. More light is coming across the baby's face. Now let's go to 35. So you can still see that the, the ears have completely disappeared. <laughs> it still blows my mind after all these years. So let's get backwards. So Garrett will flick through from 16 all the way up to 35 there. And we'll go. 16. So now we've got my beautiful 50 mil on and these are amazing lenses. Um, when you think about how we visually see with our own eye, um, our angle of view with our own eye, and I want you to sit there just for a moment and stare straight ahead and now have a look at how wide your peripheral view is and what you can see. So they say that our eye is, is it, in terms of focal length, is, is quite close to a 50 mil lens, which is pretty, pretty wide when we think about, like I'm looking here at the camera and I can see the wall out here, like I can see my hand to there, all the way back to there. So it is kind of, um, even though it's a beautiful portrait lens, when we think about how wide it actually is, it's kind of crazy. All right, so 50 mil, and I'm gonna try and fill the frame again with the baby's face and get as close as I can. And I'm going to have to go to where it's going to allow me to focus. Whoops, didn't beep then. There we go. Take another shot. There we go. So that's 50. And you can kind of see already it's getting more flattering. Yeah. I suppose, is it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, now one of my all-time favorites. This is a stunning portrait lens, the 85 mil. All right. And it's a lot heavier too. Okay, so I'm gonna come out to where the baby's head is about the same size, but it's not gonna let me focus there, so I gotta come back just a bit. It's trying to focus. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to move. Just back. double check too. I may have set that to manual focus. That's no, an auto. Okay. We were using it for filming. Okay, so this is how far I've got to get back with this lens before it will allow me to focus.
So it's taking in a little bit more because I've got to move further back and it is a prime lens. So it's not a zoom lens. So it's a set focal length at 85 mil and it is beautiful. You can see all those features. If you can, Garrett, can you go back and forth yeah. between the faces of that one and the 50 mil? So yeah, if you're wanting to do close up photos with this lens on a baby, that's how far back you've got to get. So, and you can't zoom in. So it's probably not the best lens for baby photography in terms of its versatility, but it does take stunning photos. And even though the, the distance, like the, um, the, the, dis the distance from the baby is kind of changing between those two images, you can really see the features starting to kind of flatten out. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see the flip through. And looking, but that's looking cool. more realistic, yeah. Okay, so uh, what do we got here? Let's go to 70 mil to start with, even though we've taken a shot with 70 mil there. But I just want to show you, with my 70 mil, I could get quite, quite, quite close to my subject. So if I take, try to, you know, I'm filling the frame here, it's not focusing because I'm way too close. So I've got to move all the way back. Let's go about here. Still got to go back a bit further. Oh gosh. Get up, Kelly. Stop being lazy. <laughs> Okay, that's how far back I've got to get to focus <laughs> at 70 mil with this lens. So definitely not a good lens for babies. So I'm not going to take a shot at, oh, well, hang on, let me just show you what I can see. And that's at 70 mil. But that's a good example of why you would use this at 200 mil and how beautiful it is at 200 mil. So now when I, <laughs> when I zoom in, to, let's go to 100. <laughs> okay, 135 and 200. Wait wow. till we see how the features of the baby's face. Now, so <laughs> if you have a look at that fit at 200 mil there and now compare that to the 35, no, Just the 50. Fix this up and then we can go there. Okay. 200, 135, 95, 70, 85. So yeah, have a, actually go from the 85 if you can yeah. to the 200 and have a look at the face. So the face, the features are, are, are even more flatter at that, that longer focal length. So when we are choosing, I'm going to pop my trusty 24 to 70 back on. So just to show you again, when I'm taking a close up of a baby's face, at a 70 mil focal length, um, you know, I'm, when we go back to the, the thing before, you can see that's a long focal length. That's why I love this lens so much. Before, I had to be all the way back there at a 70 mil focal length. And even with the 85, I had to move further back before it would allow me to focus. So that's why I choose this lens because I'm nice and close to the baby at all times. In terms of safety, I am within an arm's reach to the baby at all times. And um, it's going to take beautiful photographs. And you already saw before the difference of the 35 mil to the 70 mil on the same lens. So when I am doing the image critiques and I'll often pick up that a photograph's been photographed with a wider angle, you know, that's just my eye knowing 
what focal lengths are going to create certain, um, certain areas of distortion within the image. So let's take another photograph here. Fill our frame, the baby's face at 70 mil. And I don't have to move. Pretty cool. Now, the other thing with this is, I wouldn't then zoom out to get a full body shot here, like that, because if I did, and then I was lazy, now that's how I would compose that as a full sort of shot, roughly. But if I zoom back in now, and I get a photograph at 70 mil. I loved how just then you knew how far back you had to get. <laughs> like it's like muscle memory though, because you've practiced and practiced and practiced so much. Yeah, so if you now go between those two last photographs, that was me using the zoom and you see the shape of the baby's body moving and changing. So that's the difference between zooming out on your lens and physically moving your body. Yeah, wow. Alrighty. Wow. Okay, we got any questions there? Because that's kind of it in terms of what I was going to show you today. But you know what's really cool? Michelle is actually working on a blog post all about lenses. So keep an eye on your email, your inbox, um, later today. And it's going to have um, that, that blog post in there with so much more information on lenses. And um, it will give you a better understanding of what to look for if you are on the market for a new lens. Um, or you might be heavily influenced, you know, by obviously your budget and by the space that you're shooting in. So always bear in mind that there are going to be a lot of variety and a lot of different brands out there that are going to obviously cost you different amounts based on it. And then um, there's obviously going to be, say, for example, 50 mil lenses that, you know, this is a 1.2, then you can get a 1.4, then you can get a one, you know, there's going to be different um, apertures for those, um, those prime lenses as well, as well as the zoom lenses, and that will also impact your budget too. All right, let's have a look at some of these questions. Okay. Um, so there is one here about every other topic, um, but how much distortion for an adult full length shot? So if you were using like the 35 for instance, which a lot of um, newborn photographers tend to go for, what would you expect in a full length? Like how would that? So if I was taking, say for example, actually let's bring our mannequin. In. Okay, I'll bring her over. One second. <laughs> She's just <laughs> off to the side that I photographed her yesterday. And we'll bring her in and I'll show you because I've got her set up still. Obviously you would not leave a baby unattended like this at any point in time. Alrighty. So if I'm going to get a gonna 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 gonna. <laughs> that just kept coming that word. Let me move this out of the way, being very careful with all of that glass. And let me just say, you know, I started out with one lens and it was the only lens that I could afford at the time. And it took me a while to, to have the, the money um, within my business because it's a business expense. It took me a while to invest in a beautiful lens. My first big investment was my, uh, my 70 to 200. That was my first big expensive lens. Uh, prior to that, I had a kit lens, a kit zoom lens that came with my first camera, my first digital camera. And then I bought a one of the cheaper 50 mil prime lenses. So um, the, I think the aperture in it was 1.8 or something. I can't quite remember. <laughs> All right. So if I was going to take a full length shot here of her at 70 mil, I might just have to move her back a bit just to get all of her in so I don't have to move back there. Obviously, I wouldn't have anyone that close to the wall. But yeah, for full length, I've still got to move back just a little bit more. Can I squeeze in here for a sec? Yeah, go on. Okay. Why is that focus not moving? Into busy words. Is that tether working? 
No. I didn't think so. <laughs> I'll turn my camera off again. He says busy in my camera. Turned off. Move on. All right. I'll read some of these questions. Isn't Kelly shooting with a prime lens? So I did put some prime lenses on there. My 24 to 70 is a zoom. That's the one that I use for the majority of the time. Um, sorry, my back's to you, but I was reading the questions <laughs> over there on the screen. Are we good? We're good. Okay. Yay. Okay, so if I'm at 70 mil here, and I'm going to take a full length shot of my stunning bride, mother, mother, not bride. Okay. There we go. So now if I go to 35 and I get a full length shot from back here, I can see the top of my backdrops and the floor down to where this little table is here. So now to come in and fill the frame with her, like I did before in the last shot, and then we'll have a look at both of those. Stay there, Kelly, and then we'll flip back. Okay. Thirty-five. Seventy. Show me again. Thirty-five. Seventy. Even just the way that the floor moves, see how it appears that um, her head is is closer to, well, she doesn't have a head, but her, her flat, the flowers, so the, the, if you go to the 35, the flowers um, seem closer to the camera, but what happens is there, you can see the distortion when we go back to the 70 mil, you know, now it's more straight, and what you do in that instance is that you elongate the body and you lengthen the legs. Um, which is going to be really beneficial to anyone that's pregnant or anyone that's not as tall as me. So, because um, everyone love, always, you know, I, most women I know want to have beautiful long legs. Um, so when we are choosing that focal length, you know, obviously when you are shooting a, a 35 mil, then to come in and get a headshot here, I'm this far away. Sometimes that can be a little intimidating. So let me do this here at 35 and now I'm going to go to 70 and I'm going to come back now I've to get the exact same sort of crop I've got to come back to here so I'm giving them you know them a bit more space same angle and have a look at those two Show me again. Yes. So you notice it more when you can see facial features. And when you've got a baby. Yeah. <laughs> when you've got a baby as well and they're laying, you know, in the side pose like this and you are using a wide lens, you've got to get really close. What happens is you're going to make everything that falls off into the background appear really small as it disappears. But also what happens, you saw before when I was showed, shooting the baby on the posing bag, is that um, when you're taking in so much information around your subject to get your shots, you then have to spend quite a bit of time in post-production you know, filling in backgrounds, removing clamps, all of that kind of stuff because you don't want to be continually cropping your photos because when you're cropping them in post-production, you're removing a lot of information. So you want to shoot with that longer focal length so you don't have to crop your photos or spend hours editing, extra hours um, editing an entire gallery having to fix the background continuously. And what happens when I see a lot of backgrounds that have been added in, you tend to get um, banding because what 
what some people do is they paint the background in with the missing blankets and things like that, especially if the blanket doesn't have any texture. And, and then what happens when there's a shift in tone, you start to create banding because there's no information there because it's just a solid color that's been painted in. So when we are, there's so many different reasons why you would choose you know, a longer focal length over a wider angle and just even, you know, come back and watch those two photographs of my kids and just the difference in the compression, um, the separation that you can create between people when you are using that wider angle. But for me and my very, very own personal opinion, so obviously there's a lot of information out there on the internet, um, but when you are you know, choosing your lens, my personal opinion, and that's what I'm trying to express here, is that going with a longer focal length, going with, um, you know, obviously something that's going to allow you to still stay nice and close to your subject, it's going to lessen distortion, and it's going to make such a huge difference in your photographs, and I, I can't emphasize that enough, so yeah. Um, there's one more question here, yes. macro lens. So I used to have, I've probably still got it somewhere, <laughs> um, a 60 mil macro lens, which was perfect for um, doing all of the beautiful close-up details. But I use my 24 to 70. So if we, if we think about taking, and it's got a little macro function on here. We'll just bring this back over real quick. So if I want to get a close-up of, you know, her beautiful face here, at 70 mil, I can come in and I'll come to where I can focus. And I'm going to still be able to capture beautiful details. Obviously, you can see all of her face. Um, you could crop it slightly if you wanted to, but obviously, again, you're going to remove information. But if you do want to invest in a macro lens, a 100mm macro lens is going to be probably the perfect lens for baby portraits. Um, it's a beautiful um, macro lens. But for me, I tend to keep my 24 to 70 on because uh, it's, it's, I don't have time to change lenses throughout a session as well. And if I'm you know, shooting you know, my portraits, I'm going through my session workflow, and then I go, oh, I want to get some detail macro shots, let me just grab my lens, and then obviously you've got to make sure the baby's not left unattended for safety reasons, and then you've got to hope that that baby doesn't go to um, sleep, uh, go wake up, sorry, um, when, when you're changing lenses. So sometimes you haven't got the time throughout a shoot to change lenses if you're working with a baby that is, you know, a little bit more responsive to touch and isn't um, as settled as another. So yeah, there's a lot to consider there. Um, clarification on what is longer. Does, is okay. it, does it mean closer to 70? So yes, so a 24 to 70, which I explained in the very, in the, basically the first slide of the keynote, when I talked about focal lengths. So um, a 24 um, mil, at, based on this lens, that's your wide angle. And so a longer focal length is going to have a larger number. So that's when you start talking about your 70s, your 85s, your 100s, your 200s and so on. So yeah, your wider angle lenses is going to have a lower number and then your longer focal lengths are going to have a higher number. But yeah, go back and have a look at that keynote at the very, very beginning and keep an eye out in your inbox for that email. If you're not on our email um, list, uh, all you have to do is just go to the website at newbornposing.com and sign up for it. Every Wednesday we, en we email out a new blog post filled with um, amazing information. Somebody's asked here, how do I get notified on you going live? Make sure you are actually following the page and receiving notifications yeah, for it. Yeah, in the group. And do you know what? Every day I the go group. live in here, in, in the group, every day at 10.30 this time. Uh, Monday to Friday, I've got something new to share with you every day. It's always lots of fun. You can listen to me babble on. But we've been, this is now our seventh week of going live. So you can find all of the previous videos under the videos section of the group. All you've got to do is scroll to the top on your phone and on your computer. Um, it's going to look slightly different though, obviously, but at the top on your phone, you'll see little little buttons, little tabs. Just scroll across until you find videos. It's usually where it says announcements. 
So under the videos section and in announcements, you're going to find all of those videos. And if you go to the files section of the group, you'll also find there a document that Garrett created with lots of links to videos as well. So we put, um, you know, a, a lot of sort of time and sort of, you know, the thought into creating these lives and obviously Facebook finds it hard sometimes to put the information in front of every single person, so mm -hmm. you might miss something. But yeah, keep checking back into the group every day. We are sharing lots of information and having fun. Um, please check your memory card. I'm not sure what that one is. Um, what are your techniques for close-up macro shots? Do you know what camera angle is going to be, you know, huge when it comes to those um, really close up detail shots and make sure um, you aren't blocking blocking your light and and shoot from a higher perspective down and not up yeah but you know bubble babies blow bubbles and things like that but fill the frame and and use your light to create some beautiful uh, detail so you almost shoot always at 70 mil Absolutely. The only time I zoom out is if I am photographing a prop on the ground and I can't get the entire prop in, but the majority of the time I'm at 70 mil and I move my body. I think that's really important. We, we get lazy. Move your body. You saw before the difference between zooming out to get the right angle and then physically moving at that longer focal length. So when you're doing those props and you do have to go out to like 24, yep. just post-production fix? Yeah, you can do lens correction in camera raw. Uh, that will help. Sometimes there is going to be a little bit more distortion um, that you may need to fix, but the, if you keep your, your subject, and this is the thing, it's going, the distortion, especially around the edges of the frame, it's going to be more noticeable with a wider angle. But if your subject is obviously in the center of the frame and when you're wrapping a baby in a, you know, in a circular sort of pose and you're shooting down uh, with a wide angle, there will be sort of less distortion visible because the baby will be on a very similar focal plane. But if it's in the center of your, on, on the center of your frame, you should be okay zooming out like that. But yeah, because you're further away and the baby is smaller within the frame, it's usually more noticeable when you are close up. So yeah, but what we're gonna do is put all of these different focal lengths together in a bit of a, um, a video-y GIF type thing, I think, whatever you decide to do, I'll Garrett. Find something I to won't make be doing it, it work. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. All right, mirrorless lenses, recommended to shift to the RF24. Do you know, I, I tried the, um, the mirrorless and I, it wasn't really for me but I am very much looking forward to the brand new um, R5 that's coming out, the mirrorless digital SLR, and we'll be going back to those lenses, so I'll be able to have a really good play and see what they're capable of and have some fun with those. Yeah, can't wait for them to come out. But you know what, now is the perfect time. Whilst you're not photographing clients, pick up your camera, put something in front of it, whatever it is, your own children, get them to stand still and have a look at the difference of the focal lengths if you've got the ability to do that, if you've got lenses that you can do that with, so you understand it a little more. Okay. Awesome. I was at F stop of 4.5. Yeah, do you know what another really good tip for when you're shooting macros? I'm not sure what that's in reference to, but you know, obviously um, aperture is going to have a huge impact on the results of your photos. But yeah, if you can shoot with a much wider aperture, um, you know, from 1.2 to 2.8 when you're getting those beautiful macro shots, they will be amazing. They will be so dreamy. Uh, keep hearing about the Sigma Art lenses. What are your thoughts? Uh, I haven't personally used one, so I'm just talking today about understanding focal length, so when you choose the right lens for you. But I am a Canon ambassador, so it's I'm actually physically not allowed to use the Sigma, Sigma Art lenses, and I don't plan to anytime soon. Uh, but when it does come to lenses, I choose Canon because of the quality of the glass and what goes into making them and yeah, they're just beautiful. And it all comes back to getting beautiful, sharp photographs. All right, I think I'm done guys. 45 minutes, I've been talking. Thank you so much for all of your beautiful birthday wishes. They are making me feel very, very loved today. I appreciate it. It's always nice to have, um, have that kind of affection shown. But you know what, for everyone else that's out there uh, celebrating a birthday, uh, today or during isolation, um, 
you know, try to make the most of it. There's lots of ways that you can stay in touch with friends and family that you don't get to see every day, especially now. So happy birthday to a couple of other people in the group who are also celebrating their birthday today. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day with Garrett and Rob and Chanel. We're all here in the office and I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I am making a headpiece, a crown out of anything and everything that I could find laying around the studio and my house. So that's going to be fun. And then on Friday I'm going to be photographing uh, that particular headpiece in a creative portrait, which is going to be really great. Awesome. Bye everyone. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.